to worry about if you're not a uh, camera ready. The only person they're really going to see on the Facebook page is the speaker. And so um, unless you're unless you're asking questions, which is totally OK, um, don't worry that you will not be seen. And so with that, I guess I'm going to start uh, going. And Jen, if you just want to help me uh, keep an eye on the waiting room, making sure we're getting people's in um, as they'd like to. I'm going to fade down my music. All right. First of all, I got to say hello. Um, thank you for those of you uh, that are turning your cameras on. I know sometimes it's hard, but as I mentioned earlier, right, part of the reason I have this, you can't be in a more awkward space than being in your bathroom, right? And so I just, it's nice seeing your, uh, uh, it's nice seeing your faces. Um, and uh, it's, it's, as you know, it's a little different when we're doing distance teaching, right? Um, we, rather than just to a name, you get to see that face. So thank you for those of you that are doing that. All right. So welcome. This is our, this is our first day of our, our in parent engagement mini series. And, and this started out just from a really a need, you know, at Monterey Bay Q, we wanted to do something uh, for our local teachers, especially in the community, offering it to uh, obviously across the country. But um, we wanted to be able to support, you know, like a lot of organizations are right now. And parent engagement, I think, is a, is a big one because you just really heard um, um, all of all these different things, right? Uh, experiences from teachers and experiences from parents, right? And as some of you guys know, and I'll, I guess I'll skip here in a second. So before I get too far ahead of myself, welcome. This is parent engagement through distance learning. And I'm centering this around the C's. And one of these C's I actually had to look up to make sure it was a word and that I didn't just make it up. So this is a, a three-day mini series. And uh, you're gonna see a lot of like spiraling ideas throughout these, uh, throughout these three days. And so this is about uh, creative communications, consistency, condensity. That's actually a word, right? Condense, condensity is actually a word. I again, I looked it up. Clarity and coverage. So these are the C's that we're going to cover over here over the next few uh, days. Okay. And so I think I do see again a lot of familiar faces here, but for some reason, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ben Cogswell. I'm a, a kindergarten teacher in uh, in the Alice Al School District. I teach at Barden Elementary, uh, shout out to Barden. I see a, a, uh, some people that are familiar with that. Uh, Ms. Brule, we miss you over there and um, hope you're doing well. And so um, I used to be at MLK and I know we got an MLK teacher in here and that's awesome. Anyway, sixth grade teacher for seven years. I was a, a technology coach for four years and this is kind of how I really stumbled into this training role. And how did I do it? Just somebody just asked me, hey, would you be willing to be a TOSA in our district? And, um, and um, then it just went from there. And now, uh, like myself and Mr. Rob uh, Appel, who is also here, um, I returned to the classroom, just I think like uh, Rob did. And the last two years I've been doing kindergarten. And um, a lot of people were like, well, why would you go to sixth grade after kindergarten? And some people have kind of heard this story, but um, there's lots of reasons. But um, I just felt like basically that's where I needed to be. Let's say that's the long and short of it. So um, those of you that have heard a little bit more, um, it's a, definitely a, a, a good story. So this is my classroom um, in the in the fall of this year. And you can see this is actually Read Across America Day on the right here, which would have been shortly before March 13th. Um, and I guess I remember that day really well. And I remember the date because that's actually the day that I created my Facebook page uh, for my classroom. And I'll talk about that a little bit. But you can see here, these are my Kinder Rockets. And, and it's it started just at the, as a Kinder Rocket. You know, we shoot for that. We shoot for high expectations and and we do our best. And so you can see here that I got my kiddos on the on the floor. They're on their Chromebooks. Now, first of all, I got to say one thing that made distance learning a lot easier for me was the fact that my students had a lot of uh, uh, practice using the computers. Right. Uh, so that definitely, as I, some of you learn, like, man, this year, I bet, you know, we maybe have a different perspective on on that. Um, regardless, uh, it was challenging even for me. Um, because then all of a sudden, right, our, our classrooms morphed. And those of you that know me or know my family, you understand the reason probably why I put them in this picture as part of my classroom, because they really have become a part of my uh, a part of my journey. Those of you who've seen some of my videos or some of the projects we do at, at the Kinder, Kinder Rockets. And we do actually have this rainbow still out in front of our house. And I don't know when we're going to take it down. It just stays on all the time. Luckily, we have the solar power. Uh, this is also my classroom, right? These are on the left side are my kindergartners. And again, this is in a, in a Google Meet. Um, and we were that day we were working on our butterflies. And so you can see we we're doing some writing and we were doing some drawing um, in our Google Meet. And so that those are the Kinder Rockets and I and definitely miss them. If you were in um, 
the slides, you filled out a form. You don't really need to fill out the form, but for some of me, it's just kind of, I, I always like to know who's in the room. Who am I talking to? Who's my audience? Um, because that way I can really see uh, to best meet your needs. So I'm going to go in here and we're just, I'm just going to take a quick look. If you haven't done it, that's okay. If you want to do it right now, that's great too. Jen just dropped it in there. It says slides and, and form. And I'll wait for just a few more. If you're on Facebook, don't worry about the form. If you're watching it, just uh, it kind of, again, some of it is who am I interacting with today? I guess I should click on responses, right? So a lot of it is thinking about, uh, it's great that we have, again, thank you, West Ed, for being here. We appreciate that. Um, thank you. We have a lot of teachers here, a lot of elementary school teachers, um, and, uh, works some, some works with adults, right? Um, we got King City and Marina and Royal Oaks and Salinas, Westminster. I'm sure a few more, as I said, that are trickling in. Great. And so here's honestly the thing that's kind of the, the most important for me here is down at the bottom is I get a few more things. What do you guys want to learn today? Different ways to contact parents and uh, caregivers. Good ideas. Ideas how to service our families, how to engage difficult parents. That's that's a challenge always, but hopefully some of the things we're going to talk about will prevent that. Um, great techniques for parent engagement, anything and everything being connected with parents. A lot of parents and confidence. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you guys are awesome. Not techie. That's okay. You don't have to be techie for a lot of this stuff. I mean, you're going to see some of my examples that I have in here uh, are, are like, don't even have to do with technology. They have to do with mail, right? Because we have to be creative and we have to be persistent, right? In the ways that we're doing this. I think a lot of us, we uh, we found that if before, just like with ki when kids were good with technology before we went to remote learning, they were good afterwards if we had good parent engagement before we probably had good afterwards but if we had not as good as parent engagement i think this is where we need to start uh reframing this and again some of this just uh, helps me be here and it helps me think of some of my examples um, for you guys and as you can see i'm going to come maybe back to this form in a minute as a few more of you start uh trickling in uh with my responses and again i'm going to check my way here we're good to go all right so in this first one, this whole session, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of ideas. There's a lot of ideas in this session, right? There's some other sessions in this mini series that are going to show you the how to. Like I know Paul, one of our, it's his birthday today. He's not here. He's probably celebrating. He's doing one on Google Sites, right? One of the things I'll talk a little bit about Google Sites. A lot of these are ideas. So here's my question for you as a teacher, but also for schools at a system, even everything at a system. So we think about technology, think about how much has changed in the last few years, just from now, what are we on iPhone 11, right? In the last few years, in the last 10 years, we went from like iPhone one to iPhone 11. I was just going out uh, or reorganizing my house and I pulled out my own cell phone that had the original snake game on there, right? And it was just black and white and you had to play it with like the two, like six and eight keys. Anyways, here's my point. How have your practices in parent engagement changed? How have they changed? As a system, we want to look at it as a system. Sure. Some of us are started to use more digital tools, right? Um, some of us are starting to use some apps. A lot more changes happen rapidly this year, but how have they changed with the time? This is something I really want you to think about. It's hard because it's always shifting too. So this is our three-day scope and sequence. Today is really going to be a little bit of, of the data because I am always, I'm a big data person, right? I don't wanna just do something, I, there's, I mean, there's action data, which I see something that works, and then there's numbers that I can back it up. I like to do both. I like to, does it work? Yes. Why does it work? How do I know it's working? If it's not working, can I do something better? So today we're gonna to look at some of that, creative communications. How can we be creative? Day two is really gonna look at consist consistency and condensity. It's talking about the overwhelm. Because I bet you, if you were a parent out there, at some point you felt overwhelmed with your ch own children's distance learning. Uh, as I, you saw, I have four children at home, right? And that's four different schedules for me to manage my own schedule as a teacher. And then if you know my wife, she's also kind of a teacher too. And we have a super crazy busy schedule. But, and I say that because it's doable and we can make it doable for families. And my last thing is about clarity and coverage. We're never gonna have a one size fits all model that I'm gonna do one thing and it's gonna work for everybody. That doesn't work in our classroom, right? That doesn't work in business practice. It just doesn't work. We're never gonna have a one size fits all approach. We are going to have a few different ways to communicate with families. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second and I like to pause A, to give you time to process and B, because I need a second to also drink here. 
So when I do that, feel free, this is my water here, um, but feel free to enjoy your beverage of, of choice as well. If it was in the morning, I'd still be drinking my coffee, but five o'clock might be a little late for that. All right, you guys ready? All right, thank you. I love my camera crew people and I love my thumbs up. I appreciate you guys showing me you're listening. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you this story and it was a, it's a similar story, especially if you're local here to, to what you happen, right? So I, I said that March 13th, and why do I remember that date? Well, that's the date that at about two o'clock, I got a phone call uh, that says, hey, um, you know, we're gonna go in shelter in place. You're gonna have to send your school students home. Please make sure they know that they're not gonna come to school next Monday, right? So that's two o'clock. Well, for me, that was an extra big problem, um, as some of you may know why, because I teach kindergarten and I have a group A and I have a group B, right? So my group A and the way, the model we have, we have group A that comes in the morning, Group B comes and they're all there for a little bit. Group A goes home, group B is there, is there in the afternoon. So I'm here with about half my students. And what does that mean? Half my students have already gone home. I had no chance to talk to any parents, let them know about any parents. You know, they had just gone. So I'm kind of reflecting as you know, and I can still just remember kind of sitting there in my kitchen on the floor, um, just kind of pondering and thinking. And, and it just, I don't know what it did, but, but a, a thought popped into my head. And, and I said, you know what? I'm going to start a Facebook page and I'm going to pause it there, but, and we're going to talk about why, why, why did I choose that? Cause it goes to this question. What do my families have access to? Okay. This is the data we're going to talk about, right? What do my families have access to? Cause there's always this thing that we've been pushing back for a few years. Like my, not all my families have Wi-Fi. Well, that's true, but a, a lot more did have Wi-Fi than last year or the year before, or the year before number one. Number two, 95% of Americans have a cell phone. Okay, that's great. Where did I get this, uh, this research from? That's a great uh, question. Thank you for answer, asking that. It's from the Pew Research Center. And if you're in my slides, I put the links down at the bottom, the Pew Research Center. And this is, I believe, um, it's, the survey was conducted in 2019. So it's saying that this is about a year ago. 95% of Americans have cell phone. 81% of Americans have a smartphone. So to me, if they have a smartphone, what do they have? Well, they have the internet, right? If they have a smartphone, what do they probably have? Social media, right? Um, and so I'm like thinking, and, and I'm thinking like, well, what, 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 what do my parents have at home? What do they have, have at home? Well, I am honestly, I had a, uh, there's an app called Remind, and I know some of you may be familiar with it, but it's just a messaging app, right? Did I have most of my parents on Remind? Yes, but I don't know how many invitations I sent to two or three parents, and they were either wouldn't get on there or they wouldn't check it. We all have those parents, right? And so that remind would work for most of my parents, right? It wouldn't necessarily work for all my parents. And so I was like, okay, the Facebook. And if you look at this, if you look at this data, it says 69% of adults, uh, it says that they engage in Facebook, right? Who ever use the following online platforms or messaging apps online or on their cell phone, Facebook, 69% right? YouTube, 73%. That's basically, I mean, that's, that's a huge percentage of people that already own those apps. And if we really start breaking down those percentages, adult being over 18, and look at, at, at the, some of these things, right? I'm going to go back to this slide uh, in a second, but it's, it basically says 82% of adults ages 30 to 49 go on a social media platform at least once a day. 90% of adults ages 18 to 29 go on a social media platform at least once a day. And 72% of all adults go on a social media platform at least once a day, right? So this gets to this whole idea. Well, families are using what? Sorry, I skipped back too many. Families are using what? Social media, right? A lot of you guys here, I, I know, what do you use? Social media, right? So how can I, this is this whole idea. How can I get inside my family's phone, right? How can I get inside my family's phone? Here's the other cool thing about things like Facebook and, and YouTube. Even if they don't have a cell phone, how many of our, our, our people have, kids have game consoles in their house? And you know what app is on a lot of those game consoles? YouTube. You know, an app is a lot on, on smart TVs, YouTube, Facebook. These are apps that are now being built in TVs, right? How can I become a part of my parents' routine? You know, the other cool thing, and I'm going to share a few things about you about using these. I love Seesaw. I love it. It's a great tool, but I had to train my parents on it. I had to make instructional videos for them on how to use it and how to access it, right? It's a free app. It's a free download. 
do you think I had to make training videos for like how to do YouTube? Do you think I had to do training videos for how to do Facebook? No, because these are something they already use and they already access on a regular basis, okay? So these are just the most common uh, social media platforms. You can see it. It doesn't mean, here's the other thing. Am I telling you to make a Facebook page? No, I'm telling you, you have to be creative in the ways that you are communicating with parents, right? There's not a one size fits all for you, but you have to make, you have to figure out a way. So let's go back when we're talking about creative communications, because I don't know about you. Some people are like Facebook page and that's very, A, that's very public facing. It doesn't have to be, right? It can be a private page. But B, let's really start to think. This is a picture that I took of my classroom window. Um, what do you see on the classroom window? And you can just kind of answer in your own head. You want to answer in the chat, whatever you want to do. You can even unmute your microphone if you want. What do you, what do you see in that classroom window? I know it's probably a little hard to see. Yes, but Leslie, right? You see student work, right? Fish, right? Those are actually, um, Mary Carr, those are uh, those what I would do is I did a Flipgrid and I would say like the word my is orange and they'd have to listen to the uh, Flipgrid and color the word my orange. And then I'd be like the word uh, the is black and they'd have to color it. Uh, they'd listen to the Flipgrid. They'd have to find the word and color it. And if they did it right, then they'd color a fish, right? Um, anyways, here's the point. It's student work, right? And who can see the student work? everybody that walks by the classroom it's public facing isn't it on the right what do you see on the right side just like mary Carr and michael said they didn't even have to type it again right student work what do you see on the left side what do you see on the right side now before i'll say anything else i am very cautious when it comes to posting student pictures and student information I, number one, they've signed it okay with uh, my school district. They have to, when they fill out the form, we get a, we get saying like, are you able to uh, post your picture and first name? Not, it never should have first name and last name. First name, picture, okay. Are you able to do that, right? And so, so yes, our district does that. I actually have my parents fill out another form for my own record. And then a lot of times I'll ask anyways, right? And if you'll notice in my Google Meets, I always blur out all the student names. Okay, um, if I'm going to post it in that way, because it's personal information, right? We have to post safely, right? So students that are proud of their work on the right side, that's pretty cool. You can actually see the students on the right side, right? Um, and it's just, again, what is it? It's public, right? They're both a public facing. Because here's one of the things I think what's hard, hard uh, for families. Our classrooms are, if we're a public school teacher, our, our classrooms are public spaces, right? All of a sudden we go to this online model who can see our classrooms and what we're doing in our classrooms. I mean, I guess it depends on what tool you're using, right? But it's a lot more closed off. I think we could all agree on that, right? So that's how, one of the ideas I want you to think about is how as a public school teacher, are you having a public front to your classroom? Does Again, it could, doesn't have to be a Facebook page. It could be Instagram if you prefer that, even if all your parents aren't on there, you're, you're not gonna get it them all. It could be a Google site, right? There's lots of different ways, but you have to get that public front. Now, here's again, some of the reasons that I chose Facebook and why I think it's a great platform. Number one, it's free to use. Okay, that's important. Number two, I can upload a photo, I can upload a video, I can upload a PDF, right? I can upload all those different file uh, types. Like, oh, here's a worksheet. I want you to, I'm going to upload it. And, and then you could print this out if, if you have students that could print out. Uh, it has a calendar. Um, and I, Jody, did you have a question? Just want to make sure. Awesome. Sorry, I saw a microphone on. I said somebody might, might have thought I heard Ben. Anyways, a calendar with events. I can schedule events, right? Back to school night. Boom. It's scheduled. Notification pops up. As an admin, I can control who posts the page. Now it's also cool because I can separate my personal from my professional. I, I can do my Facebook page. I don't have to be friends with the people that are on my page. I'm friends with some of the people that are on my page, but I don't have to be friends for them to like my page. 
It doesn't have to be public. It doesn't have to be private. It can be private. I could just have my families if I want. It was more comfortable with that. Here's though one of the, the coolest things that I didn't realize. I used to post in Facebook. I post my thing in English and then I copy and paste it in Spanish below. And I noticed when I was looking at my own posts, I would just see English in English. Because what Facebook will do, like some other apps do, it will translate it, your, your typed text will translate it into the native device, the, the phone's native language. So if my parents have Facebook in Spanish, they will translate to Spanish. If there was an Arabic student that had Facebook in there, it would translate it. So I just thought it was really cool because all these features was built in. Is it going to translate my video? No. But if I put closed captions on my videos, it can translate that. That's a whole nother, uh, that's a whole nother thing, though. Yes, privacy concerns, right? But here's the other thing I'm going to say with posting. One thing I've, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I'm starting. A, I am starting a positive digital footprint for my students. My students are going to have their first online posting of something that they're proud of, and something that they can look back and say, "Look at this good thing I did." Now think about some of our older students that start posting all these crazy things. Maybe fifth, sixth grade, where sometimes it happens. Maybe high school. What if we could backtrack them and teach them from the very beginning what good social media in look like? Do you think that could have a long-term effect when we're helping build that positive narrative for our students? My answer would be yes. So what I've done here, and I'll, and I'll give you a second. So I have three examples of creative communications using Facebook. So you can see here, shout out. I didn't want to just do all Ben and all Ben's thing. So you can actually see shout out to elementary uh, Salinas City Elementary School District. I think overall, I got to say for a school district, their Facebook page is, uh, is, uh, is a lot better than a lot of other ones out there. I think it's pretty good. So you can kind of check that out. Here's the suggestion. Like, look at my classroom page. Look what I'm posting. It is different in the summer than during the school year. If you're like, hmm, what could a classroom Facebook page look like? Well, that's what it looks like. I have a, a, a district in Salina City. There's another one that was uh, Westlake Charter. There is a school up in uh, Sacramento, but they were also, uh, it's a, a friend of mine's the principal there, but they were also recognized by, um, um, for some of their work by the state of California. So all of these like here, and I'm gonna just bring this up for a second. So like, this is my Kinder Rockets Facebook page, right? Where the Kinder Rockets, as I mentioned. So you can start to see here, some of the things that you can see when people come here, right? Right now, over the summer, I'm doing a lot of kind of summer enrichment activity, like trying to prepare kids for being in public, like here. Look, this is a graphic that I made attached to a video, right? You can have this graphic. In fact, I have one of the things I'm doing is I'm putting all this stuff in a Google site. So it's all accessible in one place. You can get the PDF form or you can get the Google Draw and you can change it all out. And so that's one thing, that's one of my uh, projects I'm currently working on. And of course, it's, it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Just kidding, it just costs you a smile. OK, you don't even really have to smile. Anyways, you can start to see here some of the things that I posted on it. Some of you guys have seen this, right? Here was a recent fun video we did for kids helping them with my with uh, my family and some other Kinder Rockets on getting kids ready for a virtual meet. Right. You know, what's the awesomest part about this post. You know, this lady, Sandra Mosqueda, that's a mom from one of my students last year. I my one of my favorite parts is like, you know, out of all these people, when I see these likes on this, the ones that are the most meaningful are the, the parents that I know are in my class from last year because I can see they're engaging in me. And for them, I don't know about you. This is what I have. I'm really bad. Sorry. Phone calls uh, uh, at school administrators. If you're listening out there, the all calls don't work for me. Okay. I don't know about you guys, how many times you actually answer and listen to all the all calls, but they're usually super long. They're usually in multiple languages. And if you're like me, you might get them from three different, three or four different schools, right? I much prefer text and things like that. But here, here's the other thing is we are voting the overwhelm with the, with the, like, I don't know about you. How many of you guys have the whole uh, badge overwhelming anxiety sometimes? You ever look at your phone and you're like, see the badges? You're like, oh, I got, oh man, my email just went up by five badges. I better get rid of that junk right now and check it right now and do what I can, right? So parents, like, it's like, oh, I, another thing from the school and another thing from the school. Because it was a lot. Even for me, I was sending too many messages in the beginning. I'll talk about that a little bit less. But when it's on a Facebook page, it's not another message. It's something that they are actively going and seeking. It's something that they're there. Again, how do I get in their phone? How do I be a part of their routine? So again, you can just see some of the stuff. It's a read alouds in here. A lot of it is, is live video. And I'll, I will talk about that. Live videos are four times more likely to be watched than videos that are not live. And I think right now, how do we create a relationship with our kids? 
Well, if we're doing a live video, it's a lot more vulnerable and a lot more human than not, right? Like you and here, you and I are talking. Isn't this a lot better than just watching the recording? Right. Even if even if it's not a two way conversation. And the coolest thing is, like, we got to be mobile teachers. Our, our students are mobile students. We got to be mobile teachers. Here's the cool thing. I can go Facebook live from anywhere. I was on a run and we were studying plants. Right. Because it's about engagement. And we were studying plants in the life cycle. And I just ran by this just beautiful patch in the corner. And I was like, look at all these plants. And I just took out, took out my phone. I did a Facebook live there. And I said, what do you notice? What do you wonder? What do you see here? Hmm, let's take a look. And the coolest thing is I could download that video and just put it up in Seesaw. My families get access. My students get access. Learning is everywhere. Mobile students, mobile teachers. All right. Now, again, that's a lot of ideas there and it's uncomfortable. This is why social media, it's a little bit, a little bit maybe uncomfortable for some of us, but that's okay. I want you to start thinking about it. Even if not now, maybe start thinking about it. And I'll talk about some other ways besides that. I'm not gonna talk a whole lot as, as much as I did in depth about um, YouTube, but I actually posted both. And I think it's a great, uh, again, YouTube is a great platform. It's free to use. I don't know about you. I find it, it's much, it's easier for me to consume videos. Even if I'm just like uh, listening, um, as some of you may be like videos I find are, are very easy to consume for me. Sometimes I'd rather just do a video that read like a paper or something like that or a how to training or another manual. Um, also, again, YouTube is I, even more than Facebook. You can access it from more different places. Right. Uh, again, game consoles. Admin can control um, your page and it, it's cool. How many of you like not everybody realizes that. If you are in a Google suite district and you have a Gmail, do you know what you already already have? A YouTube channel, right? You already have a YouTube channel. It's super easy just to set it up. And again, you can go live there. You can post videos there, right? Educational, it can be educational content. It could just be messages. It can just be a way to connect your students. Now, could you do that same thing in a private manner and just send it the, those videos to your students? Yes, but again, how, how do you, I th again, I feel like some of the way we can relieve people's anxiety is making it very clear about what we're doing, having a public classroom, right? Because that way people are not thinking, oh, the teachers are just sitting at home doing nothing, right? You go look at my Facebook page, I guarantee you, you're not going to think that I'm sitting at home doing nothing, right? And so having that public space, it encourages it and it, it puts value, I think, sometimes, um, again, a few different, I tried to take the same three examples that I took before, a few different ideas. Again, it's very simple. If you have, if you have the YouTube app, you can just sign in. And literally, once you sign in with your Google account, you can start uploading videos, even if it's just directly from your phone. Somebody in here said earlier, like, I'm not techie. You don't have to be techie, right? You probably know how to use Facebook. You know how to use YouTube. It doesn't have to be a super fancy video. We're not Emmy Award teachers, right? People will say, fine, Ben, I'll, your videos look pretty good. Well, even when I look at my videos, there's things that I know that I could do better, better, right? I'm not an Emmy Award winning teacher. So all I need to do is get my camera up. And that's how I can get start to get kids to interact with me, to see my face. And not only students, but parents, right? Because if they know that we're there from them and they see, and they can see that, right? They're more likely to be involved. Here's the other cool thing. My Facebook page, when can parents access that? Yeah, anytime, right? I saw, I think Stephanie, I saw, she said anytime, right? If they, if we know some of our parents, right? They go to work at four in the morning. Could they get their Facebook page before that? Yeah. Could they do it at two at night? Sure. Could they do it after school? Why not? Same thing with YouTube, right? Um, 24 seven, that's right. 24 seven, they get it 24 seven. That makes people feel good having 24 seven access. Like, and, and, and again, some of the things we could talk about, like I did a training, I just recorded a video. I did a Zoom training with my administrator. You can actually see it on, on here, a, a few different trainings. One of them, thank goodness my daughter speaks Spanish because again, here's my YouTube video. And this was how I, there's my, there's my daughter. She's practicing her Spanish. And this is how we explain to parents how to get in Google Meet, right? It was much easier for me to do a video than it was for me to like create a step-by-step -step tutorial. I can send it to the parents. They could watch it. They had uh, they had another means of, of communication, right? Does that mean it worked for all my parents? No. Some of my parents, I still had to get creative and do what? FaceTime, Google Meet, 
right? Hey, can you have an iPhone? Well, why do you ask? Because I'm going to FaceTime you right now. Flip the camera around. I'm going to tell you, get your older brother. I'm going to use my best Spanish. We just got to make what works. If our, a lot of us speak Spanish, I guarantee my Spanish is, is okay. Some of you guys know you've heard me speak Spanish. It's okay. It's not great. I can have a basic conversation. Could I do a screencasting video that people really understand well? Probably not. But I bet you each one of you know, it, just ask somebody for help. Even if it's not like my principal helped me, right? Even if it's not your first language, you can find somebody. Ask an old student if you're a high school teacher. In fact, if you're a high school teacher, teacher, just find some of those awesome students and have them create the videos, right? Because we got to, again, there's this whole idea. So a parent has trouble. A parent has trouble. They can't access something. I can send them to my YouTube channel, right? Here's some other content I'm putting up there. It doesn't even have to be all my own stuff on the YouTube channel. I have playlists for other people. And I could say, hey, your kid wants to work on phonics. Oh, great. Here, check this out. Um, I'm going to send you this. And this is what I would do. I'm going to send you this link right here. There's a bunch of phonics videos on here. Um, you can just review which ones you want. Boom, message sent, it's all there, but you can't have a playlist unless you have a YouTube account. There's so many different uh, benefits to, it, to getting information out that way. All right, we have about 10 more minutes. There's a lot of information I gave you guys, right? But it's really just about being, it, it really boils down to, doesn't matter, Facebook, YouTube, do it all, do it nothing. How are you going to start to get inside your parents' phones? and not a way that's gonna overwhelm them and not a way that it's like, you know, it's, I do actually really like the Parent Square app a lot than a lot of other apps. It is helpful. I can go back, back there and I can, I can look there, right? But sometimes it's still overwhelming, right? And so send it out in Parent Square, send it out and remind, but also you can post it in Facebook. Why? Because those people that are not always checking the Parent Square or the remind or the text, maybe they're checking Facebook right? It's not going to be a one size fits all. You're not going to just do one thing. You're not going to make a Facebook page and that's going to solve all your problems, right? You have to start engaging. So speaking of messaging apps, I think messaging apps are a great way to communicate, right? Messaging apps, there's lots of them. Remind, Blackboard Communicate, Parent Square, right? There's tons of messaging apps. Um, I, I, I like I like some of the messaging apps that that uh, require no extra app. Like I know Remind, you can have an app, but it, it used to be very I think better with sending text right to the phone. Um, even Class Dojo, right? Use those messaging apps, right? Class Dojo. I think there's there's a lot of other ones. Seesaw, right? I'm going to use a lot of Seesaw last, next year so I can try to keep everything like this. Less is more, and that's what we'll talk about more. We don't need to have a million tools. We just got to have a few and use them really well. Um, and so these are just a few user messaging apps. It's very helpful. Sometimes I'd post in the morning, right? My schedule to Facebook, but I'd also send it out in the messaging app because for some reason, if they didn't look at their messaging app, maybe they looked at Facebook. Was it an extra step for me? Sure it was, but did it engage? Did it make my classroom more public? Could parents, I'm an, I like to, I call myself an excuse remover because I would send out a daily schedule and I'll show you that as we move forward. But um, I don't want my parents to ever say, I don't know what my kid was supposed to do, right? What was my kid supposed to do? How do I know that, right? And so if I have to post it in a few different places, whether it's a Google site, whether it's a messaging app, whether it's a Facebook page that's private for my class, I am okay with that right now, right? Because I'm never gonna get all parents with one thing. In fact, I even am going to take this a step further. And some of you that are on my, my Facebook friends, you may have already seen this, right? So what are these? This is what I talked about. These are old fashioned postcards. And so what I did is I, I actually printed some out with the whole idea of the flat Stanley, you know, like these uh, coach Ben ones, they could take, Hey, this is like flat Stanley. So I printed it out, but it was a postcard. So it wasn't in the envelope, right? I went to Amazon. I brought some happy birthday post postcards. I just got some random ones with animals on them because they're kindergartners. They're going to just, who does not like getting mail? And Jody, if you, I don't have uh, this flat Stanley template here, but I did create kind of a template uh, that you can make a postcard in Google slides. Um, who doesn't like getting mail? And well, sure, I could send a, a here's the other thing. I've, I felt like a postcard is even better than getting a letter in an envelope. Is anybody of you like me that you get a letter and you don't open it right away? Anybody? What do you do though when you get a postcard? 
You look at it right away. You don't have to open it. You can put it up somewhere. My kids would get there. Would they get there? And honestly, I just, uh, power school, I was able to get all the addresses and address labels. I printed out a few different sheets of address labels. I hand wrote all the messages, but if I did it more often, maybe I'm just going to print out the messages because it's more important for them to get a mail, a message, even if I've stuck it on there with a sticker in the mail, than it is for them to not get that. Even if I do that a few more times, parent engagement, it's not one thing that's going to work. We have to get creative, even if it is sending a postcard home to kids. Now, scalability, high school teacher, sorry, you'd have to send a lot more out. Maybe you don't want to do it all year. Maybe it's like, okay, I'm going to do this. Uh, these two weeks, I'm going to do period one. This next week, I'm going to do period two. But these are the things that we need to do to engage our kids and create these relationships, right? Um so again, Tiffany, what did you say on the postcards? I, it's, it, you, want, you want to turn your microphone off real quick? No, or you can ch type it in again. You said, I said, Tiffany, I see. What did you say on the, oh, oh, what did I say? Sorry. It would just be different. It would just be like um, on, the, on some of them, I just would write like, hey, it's great. I hope you're doing well. Um, keep up the good wording. Some of them, I tried to each write like a personal comment to them. I kind of had like my cookie cutter and I kind of say the same things, but I kind of try to individualize them. And then on these, on these, on my coach Ben ones, I'm like, remember, these are when our Google on, on our, our astronaut ones, these are when our Google meet times are because I'm an excuse remover, right? Okay. I send it to you on, I post it on Facebook. I send it in your messaging app. You can find it on my webpage and you can find it in the postcard I sent you in mail. And so I'm not trying to, you know, I, I don't want to come across as being rude, but like I, I don't put up with excuses because when I, when I put it that way, you have very little excuse for me, right? That you're not with it. And if you're, if you're, it's different, if your child, if you're not trying, that's a whole different issue, right? If you're trying, that's awesome. But if you're making it and putting it, well, you're not doing a good enough job. You're not doing a good enough job, right? Um, okay. So this is kind of, as we're closing this up in this next time, right? An excuse remover, right? I wish they could sell like a nail posh remover, excuse remover, apply is needed, but it means always, usually excuse remover means extra work for us, right? So I want you to think about what tools do you, do you want to start using? Now I mentioned Google sites. I'm going to show you a little bit more of those over the next few days, right? But a lot of it is today is thinking about these things. How do I create that public classroom? I'm a public school teacher, or maybe I'm not, right? But how do I make sure my parents see what I'm doing? How can I start communicating that? Could you do it 100% in Class Dojo? Sure, but you got to make that consistent effort to get your parents on there and get them engaged. Um, but again, they're not. Your, I, I don't know. Maybe you. Maybe it's just magic, and you have a messaging app, and you just said I had 100% of my people in there, and 100% emailed me, right? Um, but it's it's hard. So, what about you guys? How are you feeling right now? I'm going to give you again a chance to pause and process. I want to just click my next slide. Yep, that's what I thought. How's everybody feeling right now? Any ideas that they want to share? Any takeaways? You can do it in the chat right now if you want to um, turn your microphone off. And here's actually what I'll do. Uh, so you might want to share in if you're not on Facebook. I'm going to go to this section and then I'm going to uh, loop back. So I'll turn off the live uh, broadcast to Facebook and I'll turn off the recording. And then if anybody maybe wants to have more of a conversation, we can do that because I know some people are more comfortable. So with that being said, this is my contact information. Um, this is public information. I make my information public. I do sometimes get a lot of emails and I do do my best to answer all of them. Um, I, I got to say there was one or two of them that slipped by me here this time with uh, COVID that was going on. But these are just the ways you can, uh, you can find me. If you go to coachben.org, you will always be able to find all of my stuff there. Um, including this presentation and lots of different stuff specifically for TK through uh, two teacher, uh, teachers. Okay, and so what I'm going to do at this point, again, at those of Facebook land, thank you for watching. Uh, we will be uh, broadcasting again tomorrow and Wednesday, and there's going to be a few other people uh, as well that will be doing that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm going to let me just stop my recording and then let me stop my live stream.